Okay, today is December 8th. They just said 28 degrees at O'Hare Airport, so I'll let the thermometer sit out here just a little bit. Let's see what we get. And <laughs> I just squeaked in. It is 0 or 32, so I'm just going to squeak my second right in with 32 degrees. It's still warmer than O'Hare Airport. I can't believe that. This is not normal for my area to be this warm and east of me to be colder but it does happen so let's get the odometer reading and then what I'm gonna do is instead of having you guys let's see we got three nine five four two point eight three nine five four two point eight I'm not going to bore you with pulling out of the same driveway. I'm going to get on the road a little ways, and then I will start the rest of the video. When I first started into motorcycle vlogging many years ago, I was a typical old-school biker. Not that I was so much a Harley fanboy, but I've always been a fanboy of classic motorcycles, which includes the Harley, along with Indian Triumph. Norton BSA, the old 60s classic BMWs, and a few more I could name. And one of the things that was pretty prevalent about us old school classic bikers in the Midwest and particularly in the Chicagoland area is we pretty much considered riding gear was you put on your leather boots and your sunglasses in the summertime and then if it got a little cold, you added an item to your riding gear, your leather jacket. And that was your riding gear, your boots, your leather jacket, and your sunglasses. And that was it. And then I discovered moto vlogging, motorcycle vlogging. And I will have to admit, the reason why I started wearing a helmet on a regular basis had nothing to do with safety issues whatsoever. It was strictly just to have a platform to hold the camera and it was necessary and it was uh, not super easy to deal with since for well over a, or almost I think almost for a total of 30 years I never wore a helmet on a regular basis if I would go on trips and I would be forced to go through a state that had a helmet law I did have a helmet with me but I was so bad about it I would actually reroute my trips to uh, avoid states that had a helmet law and specifically go in states where I could be helmet free from my long trips and the thing that pretty much got me thinking about gear was the motorcycle vloggers with their comments and their emails and particularly the younger riders I'll focus on the younger riders because they were by far the vast majority that just would not let up. They'd keep bugging me about it in the comments. They would send me emails and uh, I would try to brush them off pol politely and just figure they'll go away a little bit, but they just never did let up until I started wearing all my gear. And uh, I just wanted to say, you know, sometimes it's worth taking a risk and losing a friend to give them some good advice. And if you of you really did that, you, uh, you just would not let up. And uh, it took me a long time to get it through my thick head that I was living on borrowed time with riding for three decades and never being in any kind of accident or sliding down the road or anything like that. The odds eventually will stack up against you. And if you do even have a minor tumble, you're sure going to be glad at the time that you did have that gear on because a total unprotected body especially my 50-something year old unprotected body is not going to manage too well. So, uh, and it particularly got with a lot of you doing it the first time I met Smyrna Cowboy is uh, when a lot of you guys really started commenting and really started bombarding me with it. Come on, Chuck, wear full gear. You really need it. I'm saying this for your own good. But, uh, yeah, don't ever give up on us old-timers. Sometimes an old dog can lo learn a new trick. And uh, I know it's a particular hard thing to do 
because you do risk getting the person mad at you, which I was never, I was kind of bugged by it a little bit because I just didn't want to listen, but uh, realize sometimes uh, you young riders can have an influence on us older riders, and uh, yeah, I never thought this day would come, but I will have to absolutely admit, I just do not feel like I'm riding properly unless I have all of the gear on. I have to have upper body protection, I have to have lower body protection. can't see them, but underneath there I got the knee pads on, I got the full knee armor. Yep. I figure even mine are falling over in the parking lot, that's going to allow me the best chance of walking away with absolutely no injuries whatsoever, or um, I can definitely say whatever was going to happen is going to be a little bit easier to deal with. And I will agree, your best piece of safety gear is that, uh, few pounds of jelly between your two ears that's always your best safety gear but uh secondly right after that of using your brains and not doing crazy stuff is having the gear on for that 20 percent time because i don't care how careful you are i've always said myself 80 percent of it you can take care of but 20 percent of it you have no control on people can turn in front of you so fast you have no chance to react so Thank you to all the young riders that wouldn't give up on me, and thank you to, uh, and a few old ones too that made the suggestion too. I'm not going to leave you guys out. Ending mileage 39551.0. 39551.0.